So, uh, we start again with the new lecture that is lecture 24, we will again continue about the structure of ionic solids. In the previous lecture, we looked at uh, uh, structures of fluoride structured compounds basically and uh, fluoride structured compound basically C A F 2 structure or A 2 X kind of structure, where uh, uh, there is a difference in the coordination of cations and anions because of different valences. So, as a result your uh, cation is coordinated by uh, 8 anions in C A F 2 and anion is coordinated by 4 cations and converse is true for A 2 X kind of compound anti fluoride structured compounds. And the unit cell as we drew was a little complicated unit cell, but it is not very difficult. I mean once you draw the top view and, one, and from top view you draw the 3D view, it's, it becomes very clear. So, uh, now we will look at the remaining, we started with the spinel structured compounds um, uh, which is AB2O4, but we will look at this in detail. And there are some other cubic structures uh, in which anions are arranged in cubic fashion and, and uh, cations go to the interstices. Uh, they look very similar to FCC in certain cases or BCC in certain cases, but they are not FCC and BCC structure, but they are cubic. So, let us continue discussing our uh, spinel structured materials. So, spinel as we discussed in the last lecture, there are two variants, one is normal, second is inverse, both are AB2O4. In this case, A goes to tetrahedral sites and B goes to octahedral sites. In this case, one of the B goes to tetrahedral sites and A and remaining B goes to go to octahedral sites. We can see that there are now the unit cell in this case is typically made of eight uh, uh, formula units. So, one so because to accommodate these uh, inter these uh, interstitial atoms in a in a regular periodic arrangement man uh, so that you can form a lattice. The lattice does not come in one formula unit, you have to you have to put in eight formula units of AB 204 to put these atoms in the interstitial positions in a repeatable manner. Okay. So, the lattice is little uh, bigger, so it one unit cell. contains 8 uh, formula units of uh, basically uh, AB 2 O 4. So, it is a bigger unit cell and we will see how the structure looks like just uh, in the different slide. So, this is how the structure looks like in case of AB 2. So, now since it has since it has a FCC symmetry uh, FCC lattice is made by cations and anions both, then only it is a FCC lattice. So, here you can see the lattice is drawn in such a manner, so that lattice corners are put on the A atoms, this is for A B 2 O 4 normal spindle. So, A atoms occupy the tetrahedral sites and you can also build a FCC lattice based on that and the B atoms are go to octahedral sites and oxygen basically are the cations anions. So, this is the tetrahedral coordination where each uh, a atom is surrounded by 4 oxygen atoms and this is the uh, octahedral coordination in which in this what will happen is that. So, if you have one blue atom there, uh, so if you have one blue atom there, you will have another blue atom here, you will have another blue atom here and you will have another blue atom here. So, this will make a octahedra right. All right, you can see that this is my blue atom, this is my blue atom, this is my blue atom. So, all of these are oxygen atoms right, they make a octahedra and within these octahedra you have uh, uh, this cation sitting. So, only half of them are filled, so they are filled in such a fashion so that uh, you can see this is that unit cell, bigger unit cell and these are all oxygen atoms uh, placed at various locations and within them you have at some locations. Uh, a atom some location B atom. So, this looks very complicated. So, how to comprehend this? Well, to you can comprehend this if you look at the structure in a little 
different manner. So, let us see. So, this is sort of the filling sequence in these in this structure. So, if you see at z is equal to 0, I start with the layer of oxygen atoms, these orange one are the oxygen atoms. Okay. Now, you can see that there are four squares. All right. So, this is the bottom half of one unit cell FCC unit cell, this is bottom half of another FCC unit cell, this is another FCC unit cell. So, you can see that you have basically four FCC unit cells, right. But this is at z is equal to 0, you are going to have eight of these. So, four on the top, four on the bottom, four on the bottom, four on the top. Now, within these you start filling the octahedral sites first. So, you can see that this is an octahedral site, edge centers are octahedral sites, right. But you do not fill all of them, you fill only half of them, because octahedral site occupancy is only 50 percent. So, this is octahedral site you fill, you, you cannot put them randomly, you have to put them in a fashion, so that you, are, you end up making a periodic unit cell. So, the way it fills it, it turns out two atoms go there, four atoms go there, this row remains empty, this row remains empty. Okay. The next row at z is equal to 1 by 8 will be tetrahedral, because now you have two unit cells. So, that 1 by 4 in normal FCC unit cell becomes 1 by 8. right? So, 1 by 8 position is the tetrahedral position. So, you put two tetrahedral atoms, which is the A atom. So, this is the, these are the octahedral atoms. Okay. These are FCC unit cells. So, when you go to z is equal to 1 by 8, you go to the plane in which tetrahedral interstices are there. So, tetrahedral interstices you fill only two of them, you do not fill all of them, because you cannot fill all of them, you have only one eighth occupancy. So, you fill you have filled two of these tetrahedral sites in this fashion, then you go to next layer which is at z is equal to 1 by 4, which is the middle part of the next FCC layer. right? So, this will become, so this is the bottom part of first FCC uh, layer this is the middle part of the bottom FCC cell. So, you can see that here the atoms were here uh, on the corners and the face center. Now, here they have become, so here they have come at the face centers. Okay. So, face centers on the sides. So, these are all oxygen atoms and you again fill the octahedral sites in such a fashion. Now, you fill the octahedral sites in a rotated fashion. So, here they were going all along in this direction, this direction. Now, they have rotated by 90 degrees. So, this is the next layer of octahedral atom. So, this row is filled, this row is empty, this row is filled, this row is empty, then again this row is filled. Okay. Then you come to z is equal to 3 by 8, okay, which is the again tetrahedral plane of the bottom half of the FCC unit cell. So, again you have filled the first two layers here, first layer of tetrahedral site here, now you fill the tetrahedral site here. And then again you go to z is equal to half. When you go to z is equal to half, you come at a position which is same as z is equal to 0, because it stops top surface of the bottom FCC unit cell. So, the oxygen atoms are arranged in same fashion. However, the octahedral sites are now filled in different manner. Instead of keeping these empty and these empty, you shift the octahedral sites by another vector in the 110 direction. So, you can see that this layer is now empty, this row is filled, this row is empty and this row is filled. And then again you go to tetrahedral plane, you rotate now the tetrahedral interstices position. Now, the tetrahedral sites which are filled are those which is which are along this axis. Then you go to z equal to 3 by 4, again you go to the similar structure of as, as you have here, but again you rotate the position of filling. So, now the tetrahedral sites are filled, octahedral sites are filled in this fashion. This row is empty, this row is filled, this row is filled, this row is empty, this row is empty. Alternate filling of rows. Finally, you come to z is equal to 7 by 8, where you have filled two tetrahedral interstices. Now, you can see that these are shifted with respect to what you have at z is equal to 5 by 8. So, these are shifted to the next uh, available corner. Then at z is equal to 1 you will same you will have the arrangement which is same as z is equal to 0. So, this is how you arrange cations and anions cations in, in, a, in a periodic in, in a FC, in 8 FCC unit cells 
so as to achieve a unit cell which is periodic in nature, which is repeatable in nature. Okay. So, this is a complicated lattice you have to go layer by layer filling of uh, cations in the anion lattice and this will make a big unit cell of spinel structured. So, this is how it is going to look like when you make, so these are various octahedra stacked up. Octahedra will consist of uh, uh, basically the uh, cations, B cations and tetrahedral sites will contain the uh, A cations. So, this is basically uh, uh, the spinel structure as I was talking. Uh, so, you can see here it this contains 8 unit cells of formula units of A B 2 O 4. So, essentially if you if you look at the top view you are going to have um, uh, so just like we drew, drew 8 unit cells of fluorine in C A F 2 structure. Here you again draw the 8 unit cells of oxygen, but they are not cubic cells now they are FCC cells and then you fill the interstices in a layered fashion so as to make a periodic structure. So, what I showed you just now was a spinel structure uh, compound and this is of a lot of importance because a lot of engineering oxides such as uh, you know the materials like uh, Fe 3 O 4, uh, Ni Fe 2 O 4, CO Fe 2 O 4 uh, all of them they follow. Uh, basically spinel structure and uh, these oxides are interesting because they are magnetic oxides and they are called as orpherites. They are used for a lot of magnetic applications. So, th that is why it is important to know how uh, the sites are filled in these structures and, and based on the site filling they show some interesting magnetic phenomena. Okay. So, now let us move on to the next structure which is uh, called as, uh, uh, so this is these are all these are the structures which were based on uh, FCC packing of anions. There are certain structures which are which look as if there is a BCC or FCC packing of anions, but if you look at the lattice carefully it is just a simple cubic lattice. So, in this category uh, let us give the let us categorize as uh, cubic uh, arrangement of of anions. So, in this we look at uh, first perovskite structures, perovskite is known as A B O 3 structured compounds. Then we have uh, R E O 3 structured compounds. and then we have C S C L structured compound cesium chloride. Okay. So, let us first begin with the uh, perovskite structured compounds. So, in this category uh, these the general formula of these compounds is A B O 3 okay. and this is again ionically bonded solid. Uh, the, the compounds that you can include in this category are things like barium titanate, lead titanate, uh, uh, K N B O 3, potassium niobate, uh, calcium titanate, um, uh, strontium titanate various titanates, uh, niobates they follow this kind of structure and uh, although it is cubic in many circumstances at least some forms of uh, these, uh, these oxides are cubic they, uh, they tend to sometimes distort and they make non cubic structures. So, they, they exist in both uh, cubic as well as non cubic forms. They are slightly distorted from cubic structures. Uh, so, the way this structure is made is like this.
So, in this unit cell, the oxygen atoms, if I refer them as orange, occupy the face centers of this cube. The barium atom, uh, so let us write the formula, let us say A, B, O 3. Okay. So, there are 3 oxygen atoms, right? Half, 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 half. So, 3 oxygen atoms. Let us say the A atom is the bigger cation, it goes at the cell corners. this is A and this was oxygen and the B atom is the smaller cation which is B. So, A is typically a large cation such as barium, strontium, lead, B is a small cation such as titanium. Okay. In many cases it is titanium, it could be zirconium and iron as well in certain cases and some other atoms. So, you can see here it looks as if it is FCC structure, but it is not FCC structure because not all the sites face centered sites are filled by same atom. So, the corner of the cube is occupied by A atom, the face center of the cube is occupied by oxygen atom and center of the cube is occupied by B atom. So, this lattice is basically a cubic lattice P type that is primitive cubic lattice. Okay. It has one formula unit of A B 2 O 3, the A atom being at A at 0 0 0, B at and oxygen at you need to define all the positions. If you are defining a primitive lattice, you need to define all the positions because primitive lattice vector is only 1 0 0. So, if you go from half 0 0, the lattice translation is only 1 0 0, you will go to 1 half, 1 half, 1 half 0. So, you cannot get this point. So, you need to explicitly mention this point to get this other because in FCC lattice the lattice vector is half half of 0. So, you can translate each point by half 0 0 half of 0 half 0 half and uh, 0 half half, but in this case the primitive lattice vector is uh, 1 1 uh, 1 0 0 as a result 1 0 0 or 0 1 0 or 0 0 1 as a result you cannot get the other points. Okay. So, if you if you translate half of 0, you will get let us say if you translate half of 0 by 1 0 0, you will get 3 by 2 3 by 2 0, right. If you translate this by 0 1 0, you will get 0 3 by 2, uh, sorry this will be 0 3 by 2 half 0. Similarly, if you translate this by 0 0 1, you will get uh, half half 1. So, you will again reach the same point, you will not reproduce these two points. So, in order to produce these two points, you need to explicitly mention them. So, that is why it is a primitive lattice and uh, it is. Uh, so, now look at the coordination here. Uh, B atom is a smaller atom, the coordination of this is 6 fold, which is octahedral. So, you can see the octahedra here, this is the octahedra that you make. Okay. So, B atom is octahedrally coordinated. What about A atom? How many uh, if you look at A atom here, let us say this A atom, it has one neighbor here, it is another neighbor there, 
it is another neighbor there. Three neighbors are present in this unit cells and it is going to be surrounded by eight unit cells, right? It is going to be shared by eight unit cells. So, but some of these atoms are shared by two unit cells. So, it will be 12 fold coordination and it makes sense because B is a smaller atom. It, requ it requires based on the radiation ratio, it has 6 fold coordination and A has a coordination which is 12 fold because it is a bigger atom. You can represent this unit cell in a different manner also. If you let us say if I put the titanium atom at this at these corners, let us say this is titanium atom. Now, these are titanium atoms, where does oxygen go? Oxygen goes to the And where does barium go? The barium goes to the what is the color barium we used? The red one. Okay. Put the red one right here. Now you can see the 12 neighbors, four of these, four of those, four of those, the 12 neighbors to the barium atom. Is that clear? So, this is uh, barium. Um, this is oxygen. So, this is the uh, uh, this is the structure which is called as um, uh, perovskite structure. Uh, so, you can see that this structure is as if uh, you can write the you can you can mark the octahedras here. So, this is the first octahedra you will have one on the other side this is another octahedra and one on this side and you can connect this octahedra to these points and the one at the bottom will be here right so these are all vertically stacked octahedras one octahedra here another another here another here another here another here another here so you have eight octahedras vertically stacked up so this is basically the polyhedral representation of the unit cell you can also do the bond strength check here. Now, cation uh, for barium uh, barium is it has a valence of 2 it is surrounded by 12 right. Its bond strength is 6 1 by 6 titanium is surrounded by it has a valence of 4 surrounded by 6 it has a valence. Now, oxygen has a valence of 2 coordination number something coordination number. Now, either you know the coordination number you, you, you need to get the valence out. So, what you can do is that oxygen valence in this case is bond strength of barium multiplied by coordination number of oxygen by barium plus bond strength of uh, titanium multiplied by coordination number of oxygen by titanium. So, it turns out you have then the first case 1 by 6 the how many barium atoms around each oxygen atom. Let us say this is the reference oxygen atom okay? one in this one on the back one here and one here four four 
bond strength of titanium is 2 by 3 and how many oxygens, how many titaniums around the oxygen atom now? This is oxygen, one on this side, one on that side, only 2, right? Is that right? So, this is 4 by 6 plus 4 by 3, which is nothing but 8 by 6. So, this becomes 2 and oxygen valence is 2. So, it, it does follow the rule of bond strength because it gives you the same valence. Of, so, basically solid is electrically neutral. If you get something other than 2, which means there is something wrong with the coordinations because the valence of uh, cation and ion must electrically, the, the, the number of atoms and the way they should be arranged in such a fashion so that solid is electrically neutral. So, each of them have that coordination. So, this is a perovskite structure, uh, there are a lot of compounds which are perovskites. Uh, so, examples of perovskites is uh, not only you have barium titanate, lead titanate, calcium titanate etcetera, strontium titanate. There are various solid solutions. So, for example, in these you see barium is plus 2, titanium is plus 4, but they do not need to be like that only. There are a lot of other cases. For example, you can see uh, LaTaO3, okay. uh, sorry Li, LiTaO3, lithium tantalate and then you have LaGaO3, okay. you have BiFeO3, you have LaAlO3. In this case, plus 1, plus 5, here you have plus 3, plus 3, here you have plus 3, plus 3, again plus 3, plus 3. So, you have possibilities of plus 3. So, these are, so here they, they are A 2 plus B 4 plus O 3. This is an example of A 1 plus B 5 plus O 3. These are all examples of A 3 plus B 3 plus O 3. Okay. Uh, you can also make mixed perovskites such as uh, uh, mixture of, so these are uh, mixed, let us say, mixed perovskites, basically solid solutions. So, mi mixed perovskites will be A 2 plus, let us say B 1 by 3 1 plus, uh, sorry 2 plus and B 1. Uh, so, this is B 1. Okay. Then you have B 2, uh, 2 by 3, 5 plus uh, O 3. So, for example, you have lead magnesium niobate, they are in they are put in such a fashion so that the stoichiometry is maintained and the charge neutrality is there. So, bismuth is 2 plus, you can only put 1 by 3, uh, B 1 is 2 plus, you can put only 1 by 3. B 2 is 5 plus, it is a strain to 2 by 3. So, magnesium 1 by 3, niobium 2 by 3 will give you 4 plus valence together. Okay. Similarly, you can have um, A 2 plus, uh, B 3 plus half uh, B 1, then another B 2 you can take half as 5 plus O 3. So, this is for example, lead scandium tantalate. Okay. So, these are certain examples of perovskites. So, we will finish here in this class where we looked at spinel structure and perovskite structures. We will do the remaining structures in the next lecture. Okay.